Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with LearnVisualStudio.net. In lab number seven, exercise number two, we're going to uh, accept push notifications from the Windows Notification Services, which is an Azure hosted service, so that our app can display notifications to update the text on the tile or modify its badge or add a glyph to the tile or what have you. So an example app would be a photo app that updates images when new photos are added or a news app that wants to dynamically update its tile based on the top story like the one that's uh, available uh, in in Windows. You can see the the headlines update often. All right, so we're using that basic idea there. Okay, so the first step is to configure our app to listen to the correct channel on the service or rather receive messages from a particular package by a particular publisher and we'll do that in the package.appx manifest file. And so one of the first things it asks us to do is to go to the manifest editor, click the packaging tab and then change the packaging name and it explains the uh, the justification for this above that. It's again so that we can listen on the correct channel. It was published by a given publisher uh, and uh, to only work with a given package and so this is the package name that it that we'll need to uh, to use in order to receive these messages. All right, so I'm going to copy that. And then let's go ahead and launch Visual Studio, get into our project. And then open up the AppX manifest or the package.appx manifest file. We want to go to the packaging tab and under package name, we're going to select all of that and then control V paste in our new our new package name, okay. We're also gonna change the package display name to Contoso Cookbook and the publisher display name to Contoso. So package and then Contoso, okay. Next up, we're going to uh, click the choose certificates button in the publisher line then select the file from the configure certificate dropdown and choose the contoso.pfx from the ensuing dialog. You'll find it in the search folder of the starting materials. Okay, so let's choose a certificate. We're going to configure certificate, select from file, and then we want to navigate to one of two places, either the starting materials for uh, the hands-on labs, or you can use our little shortcut, the WinStore app dev underscore CS that is available uh, wherever you're watching or downloading these videos from. If you go into the resources directory, into the search directory, there is a contoso.pfx file. And let's click open and okay. All right, and so you can see the publisher uh, name is contoso, so we're in the right spot. Great, let's continue on. And so save your changes and then we want to begin to subscribe to push notifications. And so we're going to actually add quite a bit of code here and we're going to need a number of new using statements. So I'm just going to copy all the using statements that we're going to use. And go to our app.xaml.cs. And then what we want to do is add uh, the following statements to the unlaunched method after the statement that registers a handler for commands requested. Okay, we know where that's at. So let's go ahead and copy this and go to our unlaunched after our commands requested right here. Paste it in. All right, so let's take a moment and just review quickly what's been added here. So here's where it starts. And the comments actually do a nice job of kind of outlining the overall intent of the code. So let's just go through this. We'll start at the top and work our way through this. First in lines 129 and 130, we're asking for an instance of a tile updater and a badge updater. And we're gonna use these objects to change the appearance of the app's tile and the appearance of the uh, uh, or the content of the badge respectively. I'm gonna demonstrate the difference between these two a little bit later in the lesson, but notice in this case, we're calling clear on both, meaning that we want all previous settings for tiles and badges removed. Then next, we need to register for push notifications. 
the push notification comes from the Windows notification service to our client's device running Windows 8, but does so at our request, our app's request. So that's why we're writing this code. In a nutshell, we're going to ask the Windows notification service to notify our user's Windows 8 device of updates to the tiles on the start page. To do that, we're going to make a call to uh, to a web service and say, hey, can you add this user, the one that's currently running this app, to the list of users whose app tiles need to be updated with the latest tiles? So essentially, we're going to be creating a three-way handshake between our app, between the client's Windows 8 device, and the Windows notification service. Then Windows 8 will be listening for notifications, and the WNS, the Windows notification service, will hopefully be sending them. Now, most of the code here is prepping, getting ready for that web service call. For example, in line 137, we need a channel so that we can pass the client's device URI, the location of the client's device running Windows 8, to the web service in the query string. In lines 138 and 139, we're encoding the URI so that it can be sent correctly with text characters that are appropriate for query strings. That's all that's doing there. And then in line 140, we use an HTTP client so that we can make a web service request over the internet. And then we perform the request asynchronously in line number 144. Obviously, if there are any problems, we catch it with either a status code like you see in 146 or catching the exception in line 152. And below this, it gives you some justification for the base 64 encoding. You can feel free to read that. Here, we're basically registering with the, uh, with the Windows notification services. And so it fires notifications to those clients every uh, uh, two minutes for 20 minutes. So if you leave your run app running for an hour or so, you may not receive those new notifications any longer, just so you know. Uh, but at any rate, let's go ahead and run the application and we'll take a look at the at the app's primary title. If it's a square tile, right click it and select larger and then watch the tile for a few moments. Within two minutes, the tile should change to one of the several different featured recipes. And all again, all that's made possible through this um, create push notification channel. So let's go ahead and run it. You're going to notice that when we try to run it in the simulator, there's an exception. I don't know if this is a known bug, but uh, I've, I've read where if we change it from simulator back out to the local machine, this will work. So let's go ahead and run it now. All right, so now let's go back out to our start page. And we do have the live tile. Let's just wait here for a moment or two and see if we can get it to update. And if we were to wait for just a moment or so, we'll see that our double wide tile will begin to display updates from the Windows notification service. There we go. All right, so just for fun, as it suggests, we should, uh, we should uh, go to, um, let's see, here and change this from type equals tile to type equals badge and see how this works, okay? So let's go ahead and now run that. And then go back to the start screen. Now let's see what happens. All right, and so you can see that now we have a badge instead of the rotating tiles and the badge just I think has an incrementing number, probably resets every so often, just enough to demonstrate the functionality. Uh, just by changing the one little uh, attribute in our query string as we make our call. Very cool. You can see again throughout Windows how often it's using some of these features like the store has how many app updates and uh, the various changes to the tiles for the news related uh, apps that come uh, standard on Windows 8. So obviously the other side of this is figuring out how to create an Azure Windows notification server uh, it was already created for us and we've taken advantage of it in our app, but what if we wanted to create one specifically for our app? Well, the easiest way, in my opinion, is to become familiar with the new uh, Azure Mobile Services 
just came out uh, a few weeks before I started recording these videos. And even so, in less than an hour, I was uh, never even having heard of it before. Uh, I was able to create my own uh, mobile services and was able to get it wired up to my app and was able to use Windows notification services. And so I highly recommend this, specifically the Windows notification server aspect of it. Uh, but then there's also a way to do this without using Azure Mobile Services, and there's a good starting point for this um, uh, on uh, CodePlex.com. Uh, it is the Windows Azure Toolkit for Windows 8. It allows you to build a Windows Azure cloud service that can send push notifications to registered Metro apps via a Windows notification service. Uh, so just search or Bing uh, Azure Toolkit push notification worker sample, and you should find it. All right, so it's exciting. We're moving, still moving ahead. We have a little bit more to finish up uh, in the next lesson. And so we'll see you there. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.